Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cryptos channel, my name is Nikita and today we're going to have a look at gaming in NFT and crypto space. We're going to have a short look at some really exciting NFT and blockchain games which will be real game changers and are coming out real soon. Also we're going to see how they can connect to DeFi and NFTs and of course how we can profit from it. <laughs> First of all, let's dive into some pretty cool blockchain games which are being developed literally right now, which will come out pretty soon. And we won't go too deep into details about the technomics and the mechanics of the games. We'll just have a short overlook, overview of them. And in the second part of the video, we're going to see how DeFi and NFTs can be connected to the blockchain games. And of course, uh, what's the profit and what's the use case of all that. First of all, here are three really cool blockchain games which are being developed literally right now by multi-million dollar studios backing them up. And they all have to do something with NFTs and blockchain. And the studios also have other projects. They either release them already or or they're being in development right now. The reason why I'm talking about this right here is because it's always better to know something in advance before the game is even released because you can either participate in the pre-sale or be the first one in the game before it's on the hype so you have more fun playing and second of all you get better returns. And these three games are in no particular order, it's just happened as it happened so basically here are the three. The first game is called Illuvium. It's a strategic RPG where we've got to fight enemies. There are different heroes in the game and monsters called Illuviums which you can catch collect and battle with and all these Illuviums are of course going to be NFTs. It's an open world game where we can catch these monsters very much like in Pokemon probably which we can then use in game for fighting or sell on the NFT market. It's all going to be an Ethereum based blockchain but they're probably going to build a side chain for it just like on the Axis Infinities game just to make the transactions cheaper, faster and pretty much the whole game playing better. The next game is called Mirandas. It's a pretty big gaming studio which brought to the market other NFT games and is developing other games games simultaneously to Miranda's right now. The game is also a strategic fantasy RPG with an open multiplayer world, monsters and different creatures. Players can buy land in this game, gather resources and make tools and weapons which are all of course going to be NFTs. Furthermore, all the game content will be controlled by players, meaning all items are for sale in game as NFTs and owned by real players and not developers. They are they have no control over the game whatsoever. So there will be no pay to win, just play to earn. The third game is called Amber Sword. It's an MMO RPG game where you get some land and travel across the world making quests and gathering resources. Different in-game items are NFTs which you can also sell and trade on the market. These games will be built on the principle called play to earn rather than uh, pay for playing. And nevertheless, the developers will still get their income, their profits by some really simple monetization techniques which you can build into the games. The simplest one is of course uh, take uh, some commission from trading NFTs because the games will have an NFT market so basically you can sell all the tools, all the creatures, all the land that you own and you can write into a smart contract that basically every time a transaction happens the developers, the development studios wallet is getting a fixed percentage of uh, the price that the land or the item or the NFT was sold for. Right now the most popular and profitable NFT game which you actually might play is called Axis Infinity. It works right now, you can play it like literally today and start to earn money and have fun in the game. And the thing is, most players which spend a lot, really a lot of time in the month playing this game can make earnings from up to a thousand to one thousand five hundred dollars per month just by playing these NFT games. Now that we understand where the gaming industry is starting to head literally right now, let's have a short look at NFTs and the DeFi topic just to get the whole pictures, uh, how the whole process is going to look in the future. Let's start with the topic what NFTs actually are and what they're capable of doing. And we'll keep the topic really short, but you'll get the most important ideas and the most important picture. NFTs are non-fungible tokens. It's a unique digital asset with a limited amount of copies with a different ID number or a single or an asset with a single copy which can be reproduced in the same way as it is in the original asset. The thing is, uh, because NFTs are all unique and have all different properties, uh, the market value is really hard to determine because it's determined only by the price a buyer wants to offer you for selling him your NFT. An NFT can be linked to literally anything and it really precisely and accurately proves the ownership, the true ownership of you 
that you own the thing that it's linked to. It's really easy to link an NFT to some digital asset, like for example, a digital form of art or an in-game item, for example, as we'll talk further in this video. But you can also link NFTs to real world assets, items, or for example, property. The thing is, it's much harder to do because you need like some kind of a bridge between re the real world and the blockchain. So to do this, there are some legal companies that collateralize the NFTs. For example, you can link your NFTs to some uh, real assets or uh, a house, for example, and the NFT is going to represent the ownership of this collateralized asset. So there are companies that are starting to do this right now. Uh, there are some really small marketplaces which are just being developed to keep the thing uh, growing and to develop it even further. NFTs can live on pretty much any blockchain which supports smart contracts, like for example, the Ethereum blockchain or the Binance Smart Chain blockchain. And they can be held in uh, literally just normal wallets like MetaMask or Trust Wallet, and they're being treated like basically any uh, different other token which we're used to, like for example, Bitcoin, Ethereum, or the BNB token. And NFTs can be either worthless if they have no particular value for the community or they can cost a really big amount of money depending again on the value for the community and how rare they are. So basically, as I said before, Axis Infinity, the most cheapest Axie, which you can basically even get, costs about $150 and you need three of them to start playing. Other NFTs, like for example CryptoKitties, were earlier sold for tens of thousands of dollars and even better NFTs, like for example CryptoPunks, uh, they cost about $100,000 per NFT right now. Some are cheaper, some cost more, but this is the average price. I like to differentiate NFTs in two different categories or parts. The NFTs, which are actually just collectibles and functional NFTs. Collectible NFTs, this is really simple. This is just digital art or uh, basically an NFT token with a picture or a GIF glued to it. And basically that's all it is. So it's used for collecting. Uh, it's all, all its value comes from many people want to collect it, have them in the collection. This is why they are so expensive. Functional NFTs are much more interesting because they're literally bits of code, which can be used as an access feature for accessing different parts of a website of a D app or getting some bonuses or special special features on any given platform or on a given platform and these are the types of nfts which we're going to focus on in the coming part of the video an nft can be linked to absolutely any comment which can be executed on a smart contract or on the platform or in the D app the only thing you need is to hold this particular specific nft in your wallet and to connect your wallet to the D app or the smart contract platform and that the developer of this platform specifies the privileges inside the code which you get for holding this particular NFT. For example, you might have a special NFT sword in a game and you may take it out of your wallet and put it onto your character, equip it for the character, and basically the smart contract or the blockchain recognizes this, that the sword is equipped and you might get extra power from holding the sword or extra damage, or maybe some mobs or monsters don't recognize you, or this NFT might be a like, for example, a key to some hidden or closed locations which you did not have access to earlier. So basically there are lots of possibilities, a lot of things you, you can do with this. Another form of NFTs in games is for example land, that's what they also did in Axis Infinity. Uh, in the broad example what you can do with land is for example you might get some extra resources growing on this land which you can gather or maybe you can farm some mobs on this land or you can rent this land out to other players so they can use it or you can just sell the land for extra profits if you sell it so uh, uh, more expensive than you bought it. So again, the opportunities are truly endless and it's all limited to the developers, what they can invent and uh, what they can configure in the games. Of course, because all these NFT tokens are living on blockchains, they can be easily sold to other players or other community members all around the world. And basically lots of people use this as an opportunity to create their income, to make money while having fun playing games. A more complex use of NFTs is their integration into DeFi. I think everybody knows what liquidity farming is. If not in simple terms it's a farming pool or a smart contract basically a place where you can allocate your tokens to and uh, get more tokens in return so basically you earn income by providing your tokens to somebody else so in this case an nft any nft can be easily linked to a particular dex or again any dex which uh, has the functionality that if you are providing liquidity for these decks so basically if you're farming and simultaneously you hold a special NFT in your wallet, then you get more resources for farming. So basically more tokens, or you get uh, a special different kind of tokens, which is only available to the person 
which hold a, holds a particular NFT. So again, also here, the possibilities are endless and you can configure DeFi platforms, DEXs and uh, liquidity pools with NFTs. Now let's get the whole picture because this type of farming can be easily linked and connected to games. So basically we've got games on the first side, we've got NFTs on the second side and we've got DeFi somewhere in the top or basically you can turn the triangle around, it doesn't matter. What we can do is imagine an in-game economy, a decentralized in-game economy where we've got a special token or multiple tokens on uh, some given gaming platform or game. So you can use the tokens for buying in-game stuff or you can earn the tokens by selling in-game stuff or maybe by completing some achievements, it doesn't matter. And basically there will always be people who will be willing to sell their tokens for stable coins or who will want to buy their tokens for stable coins. What you can do here and what is also being done on some games right now is the concept of a DEX for the game. So basically a liquidity pool or a place where you can exchange your tokens between each other, where you can provide liquidity. So the thing is, you can use your in-game tokens, which you've earned, to provide liquidity to get uh, some extra returns from farming. So you just don't uh, sell your coins right away, you farm your tokens and uh, get more profits. Here again, you can connect NFTs, like for example, some really rare items in the game or just any items in the game. So basically, if you hold, for example, a really cool set of armor, or if you get again, uh, some land piece, you might get the opportunity of increased farming. Like for example, your farming rate with the token you've earned in the game will be even greater just because you're a holder of a special NFT or you might get extra tokens or some extra resources which you can farm in liquidity platforms. So these are again really great opportunities. Some projects are working on them. There are also some uh, liquidity farms right now which integrated the game concept into DeFi farming but not the other way around. So this is definitely the next great thing combining NFTs, DeFi and games all into each other so they can work simultaneously to make the value of the product as itself uh, just higher and higher. Again, projects are working on this right now. Gaming studios are working on this right now. It's just not clear yet when these types of things will be coming up so that normal users can use them. Maybe it's one to two years, maybe it's three to five years, five years, but this is ne definitely going to be a really, really big thing in the future. Another interesting topic considering NFTs is NFT lending, which we can also connect to games just a little bit later. But let's first find out what is lending. Lending is basically the process where you have an, uh, a different coin, a Bitcoin or any altcoin, which you're holding and you don't want to sell right now. So all the altcoin basically does in your wallet is grow or fall uh, depending on the exchange rate with uh, stable coins. What you can do is with the altcoin is you can use a lending service which where you lock your altcoins or your coins basically in the smart contract and in return you get stable coins or some different coins which you can use for trading or for any other needs that uh, you have. What this actually does is that you get to keep your original coin somewhere there in the smart contract in the same quantity which you deposited it into and so uh, you still get to other stable coins which you can work with. So for example, you can trade or you can use some different services. Maybe you can make some profits off the stable coins, then you return these stable coins with some little interest and claim back your coins. So this is basically a different source of income, but here you need to know what you're doing just so you return your loan in time. The same thing can be done with different NFTs. You can basically use your NFT as collateralization just to get a loan. So basically imagine how cool is that you're playing a game you get some really epic sword which costs like thousand maybe ten thousand dollars and you can use it to collateralize a loan maybe you just need some money somewhere on the side or maybe you need some money to work with because you don't use the sword in game anyways the only thing is that's difficult about nft lending right now or nft yeah nft lending is that it's hard to uh, see the market value of an nft because as we said in the beginning of the video the market value of an nft is de determined only by the price anybody else is willing to pay you in the period of time uh, for selling you this NFT. So basically there are price discovery functions on some different websites like uh, the platform Affinity whose tokens that we had on CoinList a couple of months ago. But this is still a really unclear topic how it's going to be done. And basically this is why the NFTs that are even being collateralized right now, maybe not gaming NFTs, but some different types of NFTs, they're typically being collateralized only uh, 
to 50% of their last sales price. So for example, the NFT market drops, that the person who've lent you the money, if you don't return it, that he still gets uh, to keep some profits so he doesn't make his losses. Yeah, so just take a minute to sing into you how cool this will be, like a world where you're playing a game, you're first of all making money of playing it, and second of all, you can either sell the items which you farm there, or if uh, you're, you still need the item at some period of time, like maybe once a week in some tournament or once a month in some tournament, you can just collateralize the item and take a loan and use the money to work on something different. Maybe buy some other in-game items or resources for the time and then return it. So this will be uh, definitely a really, really great world for a lot of players who are playing literally any game right now. So all in all, even though the first NFTs were minted like something back in 2016 and they're pretty old, the NFT sector is just starting to grow right now. So basically the last and this year is just because the technology and the developers came only at this time to use the technology properly. And furthermore, the CPOX.com, they've released uh, some data on uh, institutional investments in different crypto sectors for the first quarter of 2021. And the data shows that institutional funds and institutional investors prefer NFT just as much as the DeFi sector. So literally, in the first quarter of this year, they invested in NFT sector and in NFT companies the same amount of money as in DeFi projects, namely $1.3 billion into each of them. So this is why our team is going to definitely keep an eye on the upcoming NFT games, NFT projects, especially NFT games which are connected, inter interoperable with DeFi because this is definitely going to, to be the next big thing as in crypto, as so in gaming. If you know any really cool NFT games or projects which fulfill the criteria we talked about just in this video, please be so kind and share them with us in the comments because I... I'm really sure this will be interesting for us and for the community, for the people reading the comments. So it would be really great of you and also support our channel by leaving a comment just so the YouTube algorithm sees this. Well, and that's actually it for this video. I really hope it was, uh, first of all, interesting for you that you've got some new info and something to think about uh, from uh, all the stuff we discussed here. And that's actually it. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next videos. Bye-bye.